Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host Lokender Kumar and today we are going to discuss how to write the discussion section of the manuscript. Discussion section is the most important part of the research article and there are some points that I want to discuss. Uh, with those points you can write a very good quality discussion section. So if you're new to the channel, uh, please do subscribe to the channel and if you like the video, please press the like button. Discussion section of uh, the manuscript provides you a lot of freedom. Discussion varies uh, from discipline to discipline. It also varies from article to article and it also varies from author to author. There is a specific style that every author follows for discussion. There is a no universal recipe for discussion. So uh, it is really important that you read uh, all the research articles, most of the research articles from good authors from uh, respective journals and then you can develop a specific or unique set of style that will help you to write your discussion section. So one point is discussion provides you a lot of freedom. It provides you a lot of opportunity to incorporate your idea into your research article. Second important point is discussion uh, because of its variability or its freedom it can be really scary because you do not have an idea that uh, what kind of format I'm going to follow. But there is a specific guideline that uh, usually I follow for my research article and I want to discuss those guidelines one by one with you. Now let's discuss what is the main function of the discussion. What is the main function of the discussion section of the manuscript? The main function of the discussion is to convert your data into knowledge. What do I mean by that? Uh, how you can convert the data into knowledge, right? Uh, let me give you an example of bacterial growth curve. Those who are not aware of bacterial growth curve is uh, a bacteria grows in a sigmoid growth curve where you have three phases, lag phase, log phase and a stationary phase. In lag phase, bacteria, uh, the division of the bacterial cell is minimum because at that particular time, bacteria is trying to prepare for cell division. In log phase, there is an increase, exponential increase in the bacterial cell division. That's where you see the uh, highest number of cells in your culture. After that, you have a stationary phase where bacterial cell division slows down. So when you perform this experiment in the lab, what you will get is the data points. You will get numbers. And on the basis of the knowledge that you have of the growth curve, you can say this is the time interval where you have the lag phase. This is the time interval where the log phase uh, was there. Then after you have the stationary phase. So you get all those data points and you convert it, their data, uh, data into knowledge. So that is the main function of your discussion. So these were the most important points uh, of the discussion section is that discussion provides you a lot of freedom and that freedom can some, sometimes be really scary uh, and it can be uh, really hard for uh, any researcher to make use of that freedom in a right way. Second, it provides you a lot of variety. It changes from author to author. It changes from person to person uh, as well as from a research article to research article. Uh, so it is really important that you develop your own style. Third is you need to, to uh, convert uh, your data into the knowledge. Next, we want to discuss that what are the important elements of the discussion sec section. How you can uh, write these elements and convert uh, one paragraph into a nice and uh, very accurate discussion section paragraph. Now that brings me to the next point that is the element of the discussion section. There are four major elements of discussion section. Element number one is the meaning of your result. Element number two is the positive as well as the negative points of your result or weaknesses or benefits of your uh, results of the experiments. Third important point is the broader impact or 
the review of the literature that what is uh, known in the particular research area that you are working in. The fourth section is the future prospect that what are the future implications of your research that you have done. So we're going to discuss all these points one by one. Now let's discuss what is the point number one that is interpretation or the meaning of the result section. So when you do a particular experiment, uh, let's uh, take an example where you are trying to find out uh, antimicrobial activity of the compound. So that's the example we are uh, following in this series, right? So it's a very simple example where you have a particular compound and you're trying to find out uh, the antimicrobial activity against, uh, let's say, three different bacterial species. So you have three different bacterial species and you are trying to find out the particular uh, activity of that uh, compound against these uh, three species. This compound is active against species number one and species number two, not against species number three. So you have a result where you are showing that it kills these two particular species of the bacteria, but not the third one, right? So basically you are trying to uh, interpret the result in a way that you are uh, mentioning that this is uh, the activity of your compound. Now you have to discuss that. Why is that? Why it is active against only these two particular species of the bacteria, not against the third species? There might be some molecular mechanism that you need to find out. You need to dig into the literature to find out why uh, the activity uh, is only against these two species of the bacteria but not against the third species. There might be some reason, there might be some targets that your compound is, uh, is affecting, right? So that is the uh, main uh, important section of your discussion where you have to propose if you uh, you are not having the valid result but you have to provide the alternatives, alternative hypothesis for the activity of your compound. So this is uh, this is a one way that how you can interpret your result. But uh, just saying that this compound, this particular compound is uh, active against these two species is not enough. You have to provide some uh, valid explanation for that particular activity. Second, as I have mentioned already, is the gap weaknesses or positive and negatives of your result. So whenever you're trying to write a research article, we always try to sell the idea, sell the result. We are trying to hide the limitations or the loopholes uh, or the weaknesses in the research article. I think that's not a good idea because whoever is trying to read or whoever is the reviewer of your research article, he's definitely going to dig into the literature and he will definitely find those loopholes. And uh, that's not a good thing because he is uh, going to understand there are some weaknesses. So it's better if you have an idea about the weaknesses of your research article, you immediately propose those uh, weaknesses into the research article. And also, if you think there are some uh, additional positive impacts of your research, you should also mention those particular points in your uh, research article immediately after discussing the af after discussing the result of your uh, particular experiments. Third important point uh, is the review of the literature. You need to mention all the uh, available articles that were published in that particular area. So if you are working a particular compound, there might be some literature available on the activities of that compound. There might be some literature available against those bacterial species that you are trying to uh, test in your uh, experiment. So it is really important that you mention all those uh, points because researchers, they are working in this particular area and uh, you are the uh, next one who is uh, trying to work in the same area and uh, it's your responsibility that you should uh, mention or you should cite their uh, research because mm, it's a kind of a chain uh, of the of the results or or the literature that keeps going when when you keep citing the latest information in the in the particular research area so it is really important that you consider 
uh, all the articles that were published and you properly cite all those articles and you also write your discussion section in the light of all those results that were mentioned by previous researchers so that's a very important point here you need to discuss the results that were mentioned by the previous researchers and the last but not the least is the future prospect what is the future what are the different different experiment that you propose uh, that can be really important to extend your research or if someone wants to extend your research what are the experiments that you propose in the particular research area it is really important that you discuss those future points so that covers the future prospect of your research area in case of uh, antimicrobial compound you can propose now i have tested in the in the lab and i have found out that these are the uh, bacterial species or bacterial genus that can be killed by this particular uh, compound now we can develop these kind of therapeutics we can develop we can test these uh, this particular compound in different models so these are the points that you can uh, mention and you should uh, mention in your uh, discussion section in the end of the discussion section so for every result you can follow this uh, pattern and this pattern is really really useful it is really useful uh, as far as I have uh, done my research it's been very useful for me so uh, these are the points that uh, you might be uh, able to uh, you know cope up and you can incorporate all those points in your uh, research article let me summarize again what were the important points that were discussed in this particular video the first point was start with the result because a result is the highlight of your research result is the core fruit of your experiments so you need to highlight those results first and then move on to the positives and the weaknesses of those results then you can start discussing discussing the available literature or what is known on that particular uh, research uh, question or that particular uh, research article and the last point you should and uh, you should incorporate all those future prospects or future implications in your research article that is really important and you should cite all the researchers that are working in that particular area it is really important so uh, i hope these uh, points are going to help you while you're writing your research article especially the discussion part of your research article and uh, i want to wish you uh, good luck for your research article and I hope your research article will get published in a very good journal. Alright, so that was all from my side and I hope uh, this uh, video lecture is going to help you while you are writing the discussion section of your manuscript. If you like the video, please press the like button and uh, if you want to support my channel, you can support me on my Patreon website. I will post the link in the description box and uh, if you like the video, please press the like button. Thank you. Take care.